What's going on, y'all? Today's video is about innovation versus tradition. Last week, we did the photography side. This week, we're going to talk about videography, video production, how things have changed, and how if you're doing things the old way, you probably won't make it. There's, again, five things you need to look at when we talk about how innovation has changed what we do, how we do, and why we do it. So let's get right to that. First, you know what we got to do. We got we to gotta roll our graphics. innovation versus tradition let's talk about the number one thing or we're going to go in order of five things kind of like we did last week you want to think about how is this product the product or service that you offer changed right because a lot of people aren't aware of the changes 20 years ago if you were a videographer you probably did at best some boring training video you either did commercials or that was really about it. Some type of intro video that would play on the monitors in a certain situation. You, you didn't do much. There just wasn't, I'm not going to say much use for video, but every company didn't need video 20 years ago. They just didn't. Like you can have a plumbing company that would have no use for video. They just didn't need it. Whereas today, every company needs video. They need video for their social media accounts, all five and six of them. They need video for their websites. Not only do they need one video, but they need consistent video. They need video testimonials. They need intro videos. And it's great that they are starting to be aware of this. And you want to make sure that you understand how it has changed. You don't have to just work for the news company in order to be a good photographer or videographer. You don't have to go into filmmaking and make movies to find ways to be creative with your camera or make a living with your camera. And that has changed a lot just 10, 20 years ago. And if you understand that, you won't build your business with the advice that you're getting from people who were in business 20 years ago. Number two, let's talk about who is it for? Right. Again, we touched on this a little bit with number one. 20 years ago, it was for newscasters, maybe companies who could afford to advertise on TV. Maybe. And it wasn't a lot of them. It was your car dealerships. It was a few places late night that you would see with commercials, maybe a construction company, really high end companies who could afford to be on TV. And that's changed. We're doing it for way more than commercials. And even if you wanted a commercial, it's so much cheaper to get a commercial ran on YouTube or ran on some sort of social media. You don't have to have this crazy commercial that's only ran during your local news, you know, at eight o'clock when you're paying $300,000 to get 30 seconds of airplay. Now they can spend $300 and get a video in front of potential clients on Facebook or YouTube all day and night and actually get more bang for their buck because they're getting in front of a more accurate audience. So it's not like it used to be. Now a food truck can afford commercials where back in the day, a food truck wouldn't even think about marketing on that, on that level. They just didn't bring in enough revenue. Some restaurants couldn't afford marketing on that, on that level. Now everybody can afford marketing on that level. It used to be 10 or 12 video production companies in your area fighting for work. Now it's just a gold mine. Like we live in the best era of content creation because we're right in that era where a lot of people don't have it. They're, they're starting to realize that they can afford it and there's still a lot of opportunity. So let's talk about number three. Number three is how do I market that product, right? How do I market my ability to be a video production company? The way you market your ability to be a video production company has changed. Traditional was yellow pages, newspaper, commercial. Now it's social media and other ways to get in front of your audience. What I teach, and I'm gonna pop this up here again because I'm gonna keep punching y'all in the throat with it. Because y'all think, well, what could be in the course? What I teach is ways of understanding who your target audience is so that you know where they look for businesses like yours. They will literally tell you. They will literally tell you. I go to X, Y, and Z to find businesses. And all you have to do is get there. All right, let's talk about number um, four. 
right? Number four talks about how do we deliver or provide the service? Let's go back. Let me take you back 20 years ago, right? You deliver video was on a DVD, a VHS tape, something like that. It was a tangible item that people wanted in their hands. People will fight you for the tape, like pictures now. However, understanding that you still can't deliver images the way you used to or video the way you used to, you gotta look at how clients want you to deliver those products or services now. If you're, just like I said, you're in photography, you probably could sell prints and frames 10 years ago. Today, they're like, for what? I don't want a tangible picture taking up space that I got to dust. No, just like you probably don't want to dedicate a whole wall in your game room to DVDs anymore. For what? I got this little bitty ass box that sit on top of everything that plugs right into my TV and I can scroll through all the movies I ever wanted to watch on Netflix. So the way content is being delivered has changed and you need to understand that so that you can offer a valuable product. If I got an upsell and I'm trying to upsell you to come get a DVD, people gonna look at you like you crazy. Like what? I don't want this on DVD. Now don't get me wrong. You may meet some people that's like, yo, let me get that on DVD. You may meet some people that's on that. Most people aren't. So whatever you do, you need to understand that how you deliver it is extremely important. I use a lot of Vimeo. I use a lot of YouTube for clients and we manage their YouTube channel. We were doing some 360 degree videos. How do we deliver it? Via their YouTube channel. Now we got our foot in the door. Now we start marketing on YouTube and other social media. So those are things that you need to think about when you're working with clients because somebody's giving you information that's old, talking about tapes and DVDs and you know, yada, yada, yada. Let me give you, let me give you an example of this that's not that old that's gonna make you think. Hold up. This 4K fight, 8K fight, right? Quality, 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 quality. Two, three years ago, people were like, oh my God, he's delivering in 4K. Wow, we need that. Now, business owners are conscious as to how long things take to load on their website. That 4K file not helping them out. They don't want that big old 12 gigabyte file. They want something that's light, that loads fast, that can be streamed. Streaming is the big thing. And they want a video that's gonna load quick. That's why 720p may be your friend way more than 4K. Now you can say, hey, I shoot it in 4K and compress it and get all this great quality, but it ain't helping clients, it's hurting clients. 4K files, unless it's streaming from like YouTube or something like that, hurting clients. Plus, if they have the type of clientele that's on their website via mobile devices, how many screens you know are 4K? There are a few that's coming, but when was the last time you really checked the difference in your video stream? It had to go down to like 480 for you to be like, man, this is not the best quality. You know, what am I streaming in right now? Do any of you know? Just curious. Do you know what I'm streaming in? A lot of y'all checking because y'all haven't even paid attention. Y'all like the quality decent. It's clear enough where I'm good. I can be in 720p, I can be in 4K. All right, let's talk about the last thing, right? And the last thing is the most important thing when you rock with Ty over here at Flash Film Academy, is how do you become profitable? Becoming profitable as a content creator, as a video production company has changed. It used to be a whole lot of money in the licensing side of it. Because anytime you shot a video, it was going to be on a commercial or something. It's not that much money in the licensing side anymore because a lot of people are just putting it on their YouTube channel. They're not looking to shoot commercials with it. So the thing is becoming profitable, being profitable. You got to find new ways to be profitable. The old way to be profitable was eyeballing a job and then spitting out a price for that job that hopefully left you enough room after cost to make some money. That's the old way. That's tradition. That's how your uncle them did it. That's how I pitch a man in the club, pitch a man. It cost me two, three dollars a picture. But if I sell them for five, I get to make money. That's what the old pitch a man, you know, would do. So how do we become profitable as video production companies? How do we change and be innovative on how we are profitable? Every company understands that they need to remain innovative on profitability, right? The way iTunes or Apple Music went from selling $99 songs or $10 albums that you can download to a subscription is them being innovative with how they're profitable. With Photoshop going from being $3,000 to $35 a month, 
they're innovating how they become profitable. Subscriptions, and that's something I talk about big time here. Those are two places I'm punching you in the throat, trying to help you understand how to how to be innovative with your pricing. Subscriptions is the is the future. So you need to be ready for that because clients need more than one video. They need four videos a week for the rest of the year. If you're selling them one video, yeah, you may have made 10,000, but you probably left 200 on the table. So enjoy your 10 because it's going to run out. Um, stock videos. I like, I like that. Visual says some of my stock videos have sold multiple times and it's money coming in over and over again. Stock videos is a great way to be innovative and be profitable using content. That's a, that's a really good way. I tell people all the time and in the contract pack, when you do video production, guess what? It says that we can use this footage for stock footage. I've had it where we've hosted podcasts for companies, right? We, we will pay a subscription fee. We'd host it, now, even though we would host it on something like Anchor, that's free, but we'd host it, include it in the price to record the podcast, and then the ad revenue becomes ours. There you go. So again, number five is, is ways to be profitable, right? You want to make sure you're profitable in the right ways, depending on what your niche is and what you're delivering. You want to make sure you find profitability in doing Instagram versions of the video, Snapchat versions of the video, TikTok versions of the video, YouTube versions of the video. It's up to you to research the difference in video that they asked for. You couldn't have got that 20 years ago, 10 years ago, probably not even three years ago. So understanding the importance of adding a QR code going through the pandemic, it kind of pushed everybody into learning how to work QR codes and scanning them. Even grandma got to go to the restaurant and scan it. Now QR codes are profitable. So if I add a QR code to your video, that's an upsell. That's an add on. That's an innovative way to be profitable. That wasn't there three years ago. Those are things you need to think about as you approach your client, as you look to survive in this industry. All right. Today's video was really about understanding the difference in innovation, understanding where the industry is going, understanding why you need to be mindful of it, what you need to pay attention to, how you need to move and navigate to stay profitable. Because if you keep doing what you used to do, you're going to be right where you used to be. With that being said, I'm going to ask that you hit that like, share, subscribe button and all that stuff all your favorite YouTubers tell you to do 20 times a day. And I'm, I'm going to ask also that you post what you learned in this video, even if it, had, if it had to do with the topic, if it had to do with questions that were asked away from it, I would love to know what you learned because that helped me create great topics for you so you can continue to learn. If you're listening on a podcast, please rate my podcast. Please go ahead and give me them stars and write how you feel about it because podcast is almost at 50,000 streams. Big shout out to you if you're listening on a podcast. Really appreciate you. Make sure you give me a review and I will see you guys in the next video. Hey, keep in mind that the video you just watched contains clips from a longer lecture that's available to our gold members at flashfilmacademy.com. You can go to flashfilmacademy.com to watch the complete lectures. If you wanna get all the gems and all the information, or you can stay on the channel and continue watching some of our content here. Just click one of those boxes somewhere around here. Just, yeah, you know where to go. Right up in here, somewhere. Wherever it pops up, you you know what to do. You got this.